Hi, welcome to West Coast Stackers. Whether you're a seasoned stacker, a dedicated prepper, a passionate numismatist, or a silver investor, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the silver buffalo rounds I have here and why I'm a stacker. So hang tight. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Today I have my generic one ounce buffalo rounds made of triple nine fine silver. The design of these rounds is inspired by the famous buffalo nickel, which was minted in the United States from around 1913 to 1938. The buffalo nickel featured a Native American chief on the obverse and American bison or buffalo on the reverse. An interesting side note that I did not know prior to this video is that these rounds are known by the reverse rather than the obverse or the front. Getting, you know, uh, getting changed at the store is becoming a rare event. Uh, we know coins generally by the denomination of the coin, who's on it, but rarely it's reverse. So if I said a penny, uh, we would say it's Lincoln on the front, but who is on the back or what's on the back? Uh, that would be the Lincoln Memorial. If I said a nickel, you might remember Thomas Jefferson was on the front of a nickel, but what's on the back? Uh, didn't know. I had to look it up. It was the Monticello Plantation in Virginia. Um, on the front of a dime, we have Franklin Delano Roosevelt. What's on the back? Again, I had to look it up. It was a torch, the olive branch, and the oak branch symbolizing liberty, peace, and strength. So the famous Native American chief depicted on the one-ounce buffalo rounds is a fictional character, not based on a specific historical figure. I guess that's why people refer to the buffalo instead of the Indian chief. The original design of the buffalo was created by James Earl Frazier, an American sculptor. It was said that Frazier tried to capture the spirit of the Native American culture rather than depict a specific individual. The Native American chief on the buffalo nickel is referred to sometimes as the buffalo nickel Indian or the Indian head. You know, this is a perfect example of how I went through life. About 2016, the news and politics were just a blurb on TV. I accepted the one-minute segue as a reality. Uh, it's kind of like accepting the reverse, the buffalo as the default description. Uh, just a side tip or a side note for the numismatists. Yes, our friends that study coins and collect coins. There are instances where coin design and description may prioritize prioritize the reverse you know we know that uh, for instance like maple leaves on the front of the coin uh used to be a uh, queen elizabeth now it's uh king charles uh, and we generally refer to them as maple leaves referring to the reverse there was also uh in the united states there was the the uh, piece or silver dollar from the 20s to 1935 i think and although the profile that has the lady liberty it's generally referred to uh, on the reverse, which depicts an eagle perched on a branch with the word peace inscribed, and it's often referred to as a peace dollar. Just just a side tangent here for our numismatist friends. So when I came to the world of silver, everybody refers to our favorite generics as buffaloes. I just accepted what was told me. Same thing with the news. I generally accepted my little one minute, 10 minute segues, you accept it as a truth. It wasn't until 2016, uh, I didn't vote in the presidential election. Of course, Trump won. I caught a new segment of Trump out in front of Trump Tower speaking to the press about his building being bugged. The news pegged him as a lunatic. And I thought, oh my God, this guy's crazy. It was a couple of months down the line when I saw a video on YouTube with Admiral Rogers, director of the NSI, NSA, where he describes what occurred in 2016. The NSA was doing a regular audit when they discovered that there were agencies spying on the president's transition team. And he said he met with President uh, Trump or President-elect Trump and lured him to the spying. You know, when I, I found this out several months after that, I, I thought he was a lunatic. That's the way the news described him. I wasn't political. I didn't vote for either person. I had no interest in either person. But now I was mad. 
I, it was because the news wasn't the news to me anymore. I had to look under the hood every time when I heard something. And when the, the news told me <laughs> that a coin is a buffalo, I generally now I have to look and find out why it, they say that and if it's true. So when the Fed says that while the banking system is sound and resilient, I would say I have to look under the hood, but a bank failed later that day. You know, I'm a small business owner in Southern California. I've been stacking less than a year, and I hope you'll share this journey with me. Uh, I just wanted to share with you my red pill moment. Um, just, you know, the red pill moment is the the idea is that uh, from the matrix where Neo is offered a choice between a red pill and a blue pill. Taking the red pill represents choosing to see the harsh realities of the world even if they're uncomfortable or contrary to popular beliefs. So in popular culture, red pills come to symbolize a person who's awakened to the truth, um, become disillusioned with mainstream narratives and ideology. Uh, am I comfortable being contrarian? No. Do I claim to have some full grasp of everything true? No. You know, it, it's so difficult. Here, my analogy is this. There's different topics in the world that affect us, and it's like millions of coins thrown in water. Some of these coins represent real and important issues, while others are just misleading or, or just nonsense. Now imagine someone continuously stopping the water, creating turbulence, obscuring the coins, and we're left stumbling around in the water, blindly picking up the coins one by one. We can't see through. The water's all muddied up, trying to determine if this is real or fake. You know, when I had my red pill moment, it made me mad when I realized I had to do this. I had a, when I hear something on the news, I have to figure it out and I have to do my own research. My wife says this is adulting, you know. Yeah, so I hope you'll share with me this journey. Continue stacking, stay vigilant. Remember, the freedom to invest is a fundamental right that we must protect. Thank you for being part of West Coast Stackers. And remember, the difference between a conspiracy and the truth is about six months.